Welcome back, everybody. This is Rudy Rodriguez Shomat with Nick Taylor with Come On CFL. I have our resident CFL retiree. He's at the Social Security office now. Nick Taylor, three-time Grey Cup champion, seven years in the CFL. He is here to talk about everything CFL. Remind the people who you are, Nick. This is our second episode of Come On CFL. Um, first one went really, really well. We're going to tighten this ship up a little bit better, so we're not on here for over an hour. No. We do have an exciting uh, announcement. We do have a guest, the one, the only, Demario Houston, cornerback for the Calgary Stamp Peters. He will be on with us in, in, briefly um, in the next few minutes, so we're excited about having him on. And we will talk about, you know, how Nick impacted his career and made him a great cornerback. So, Nick, tell them who you are again. Remind the people in Canada, oh, Canada. Yes. Uh, by the way, folks, the greatest national – I'm American, but go Canada is the greatest national anthem on the planet. Are, are you it. trying to get some Canadian fans, Rudy? I, 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 I sing that song, and I'm not even Canadian. It's a beautiful – it's a very nice song. It's a banger. It's a banger. Yeah. I, I definitely rock with it Um, <laughs> by, like – the halfway mark of the first years in the CFL, I pretty much learned it. And, you know, by definitely four, year three, four, five, I was singing it like the whole lyrics, but I can't sing it unless I kind of like in the flow of the, of the games on the sidelines. So if you ask me verbatim word for word right now, all I got to do. I know it, I know it word verbatim. Oh, Canada, oh, Canada, a yeah. home in native land. And then right you now. Heard. Yeah. That's a damn shame. Seven years in the league and you don't remember the song you heard every day. God, that's a damn don't, shame. Don't rescind, kill me, guys. Re, rescind his Canadian <laughs> citizenship or whatever he's got. I mean, that's, I know his son is Canadian. My son actually. is. <laughs> I was born in Canada. So, yeah, Nick, remind him who you are, man. Man, I'm a CFL veteran, um, three-time Grey Cup champion. Rudy already said this. Um, um. Two years in Winnipeg, back-to-back -back champions. Um, those ones are really near and dear to my heart just because I actually played in those games. The one in Ottawa, I did not play that in a championship game. I played like 10 games that year. Started as a, a rookie, a 28-year-old rookie. Um, um, I had a fun time in Canada, man. Great experience, man. It's a fun game. That's why we're bringing it to y'all. We love talking about it. Um, it's just an exciting game, and we, we just want to keep talking about it. And I'm here for it, baby. I'm here for it, baby. You know, I blew it already again. God, dog. I got to get used to this, folks. I apologize. This is Come On CFL presented by Bet99. Bet99 is our sponsor. They are our partner in this endeavor to create Come On CFL and bring it to you. Be sure when you go and check out Bet99, Sign up code is come on 99. That's all capital letters C O M E O N 99. And you have up to a $1,500 in first bet encore bonus. So get on board, but please always remember to bet responsibly. All right, now that I got that out the way, let's jump right in. Talk about last week's games, Nick. Okay, okay. Where do I start off at? Let's start off with game number one of the week. Uh, we had Toronto play Sass. It finished 30 to 23. Sass is playing with their backup quarterback. Trevor Harris is out. So this is why I picked Toronto to win the game. Their starting quarterback is out. They come out with Shea Patterson, the, the former Michigan, the University of Michigan, Michigan quarterback. He starts. He has his first start. I'm thinking that Toronto defense, they get pressure. They force him into a lot of turnovers. Even though Toronto quarterback Cameron Dukes is just like his fourth or fifth start, whatever, whatnot, he's coming in. He's starting for Chad Kelly this year because of Chad Kelly's suspension. He's been playing very solid this year. They've been handing the ball off to their to their running back, Kadeem Carey. Um, they've been protecting the ball for the most part until last week against Montreal. Is Demario here already? He's here already, guys. Sorry. We'll get into it. All right. You know what? We'll, we'll come back to our um... – Recap of last week. We already yes. have. Now, he's already here with us. The one, the only, Demario Houston. Um, Demario, welcome to the to come on CFL. We greatly appreciate you showing up here today and and telling us how trash Nick Taylor was when he played in the CFL and how you taught him how to play cornerback. So hey. Nick, 
Nick, jump on in, man. Hold on. He's on time. He's never on time to any meetings that we had in practice. He, I'm so, he's he's early. So, he's never been on, early. Come on hey, now. This is that oh, new. This now. is that new top DB money he's getting. So now he's you know he's being a leader. He's showing up on time. He's being that guy. Everything that he wasn't in Winnipeg when I played with him, and probably because he now. followed me so much, you know, as my understudy, and I was always late. So oh. he became late too. So he got that from me. I, I got oh that from me. man, no, you know I'm I always on time, man. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How, How you are feeling? You? Ah, feeling great, man. You missed you know, last just, game. Yeah, man. I, yeah, I'll be back soon. I'll be back soon. Okay, okay. Um, your team went down last game, man. How you feeling about that one, man? It was a close game. Y'all had the game for most of it, most part of it. Um, in control the whole game, and then y'all played the, the defender champions, and they come back and and they get the win on y'all. How do you feel about that? One? Man, I feel like uh, I might get a fine because I was in here yelling in my apartment. I was so <laughs> pissed off. Uh. But now nah, we played good. Um, just got to finish at the end. Uh, small things that just kept us from winning. You not being out there. That's that's the small things. Nah, don't answer nah, that question. I, don't I, answer I, that I, question. Don't ask, don't let me set you up. I, don't let me set I, you up. Yeah. You got a there locker room go. to go to, man. Don't let me set you up. Hey, there you go, man. Playing around. Hey, man. We just want to welcome you to the show, man. You are our first guest. Um, I consider you my little brother. Um. We came and, up and, together. And yet, you're, and yet you were about to do a Keyshawn Johnson on his ass. You know, I, that's why That's why I stopped it. I will not set him up like that. I'm not going to let him go in the locker room all messed up. They pay attention to the podcast. They see what's going on. I ain't going to do that to my man. But, man, welcome to the show, man. It's, it's amazing to have you here, man. The CFL interception leader last year. Um, Man, first of all, I'm going to ask you, man. How did you get the name, the nickname Spoon, the Mario Spoon Houston? Tell us about that. So, um, high school, um, that's when my uncle gave it to me. Uh, he had a, a teammate that he grew up with, and, you know, I just reminded him of him in so many ways. He was an athlete, so um, me just growing up and just being an athlete and playing football, basketball, just, man, I was in the streets playing playing sports all day from the time the sun came up till it went down. So um, I guess that's how his friend was. And, you know, he gave me a nickname and it's just stuck with me. Um, I tell people, I tell people call me Spoon because one, they either forget my name or they pronounce it wrong. So I'm just like, all right, you can't mess up Spoon. You're not going to forget we, your name now. Did, did, I, did I mess wow. it up? The Mario? No, right. Okay, yeah, you said perfect. It right. yeah. perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, nah, 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 Nick, he, he's supposed to be my boy, but he'll say it wrong sometimes, too. So I'd be like, hey, bro, just stick, stick with Spoon. Uh, that's not surprising with Nick. Hey, hey I, we thought it was because you was the little spoon in the bed with your wife, you know. We thought, hey. <laughs> that's what we thought it was. My bad. Hey, I'm glad you clarified that for us, man. Hey, man, yeah. another quick question, man. I know you're, um, you're a father of five, um, a husband. What's your inspiration, man? What what gets you going every week? Is it the kids? Is it, you know, is it just the, the passion that you just normally come with? What, what gets you going, man? Um, they're my reason why. Um, why I go hard and why you know I try to be the best person to me, the best athlete, you know, the best player. Um, I gotta set an example for my kids. Um, just setting the 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 lifestyle for them and you know they're the reason why I go hard bro and um my family back home you know they just push me and motivate me every week to go hard so you know it's only right that I give it 110. How how, I'm gonna let Rudy get to the next question how is it being a father of twins we understand that you got you know twins right now boy and a girl yeah boy and a girl man hey I ain't gonna lie it it ain't for the week (laughs) I promise you it's not for the week, but now nah, you got to have a good support system. Uh, my wife and my family, her family, um, they definitely make it easy, especially while I'm away in Calgary. You know, they're back home in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. So I definitely want to give a shout out to my wife. So um, holding down the fort while I'm, you know, doing my thing here. Okay. 
I, I, I just, heard you have. I, I heard. Hold on, my bad. I heard uh, Nick. Nick get ready to have uh, twins. Nick. No, you didn't hear that. Nico's <laughs> the only. Nico's the only one, and he will be the only one. He's one and done, like a Duke prospect. Oh, oh man. <laughs> oh, you mean like Bronny? Yeah, like Bronny, a USC prospect. I should have said like a USC prospect. You're right. <laughs> Uh, um, how, how difficult is that for you? Um, you know, I, I actually, I actually just had a baby on June 1st, my third, and it's exhausting. Um, but how, how difficult is it for you to be away for so many months from these, from small children that you're, you're missing out on these, the chance to see them grow up? Do they come up to, are they able to come up and visit and how does that work for you? Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely hard. You know, I think it's time I'm going to do it every day. Talk to them. Shoot, baby girl, uh, my truly my son, he actually was walking before I left. Um, my daughter loved when she wasn't she wasn't walking yet; she was still crawling. But she literally started walking last week. And, oh, um, he was, that was about eight months. Your your son that could have been that long. It was about eight months he started walking. Mm-mm, he left. He started walking literally before I came up for camp. Okay, so uh, they were probably what. 11 months okay okay a yeah. little off yeah, yeah. a lot off <laughs> all right but now uh, it, it's, it's definitely a blessing though um they'll be able to come up probably for my birthday in september um but it, it is hard you know not being being with them and you know seeing them go up but i mean it's got to do what i gotta do yep gotta do it baby so what's your story? How did you get? How did you end up in the CFL? I see you went to Southern from North Carolina. Went to Southern. Did you pledge a fraternity when you were at Southern? Nah, I, I I thought about it, but seeing like my teammates, like they coming into, they came into the weight room and practice like zombies. I'm like, I'm trying to figure out like what, what's what's going on. And then I put it together. I'm like, like nah, yeah, I'm I'm good. Football is enough. I'm already trying to hey, juggle school, juggle practice, juggle weight. No, I'm good. What what, what are they? What were they pledging when when they came in like zombies? Was it Omega Sci-Fi, or everything? They were all Man. pledging different oh, terms. Yeah. All of, them. all of. Them. I'm like, yeah, I I pass. Y'all y'all got it. Yeah, I've been I'm, I'm a member of Phi Beta Sigma. I've been a Sigma for 27 years. So, oh, yeah, bro. pledged yeah. when I was 19 years old. So yeah, I would. I always wonder, you know, because the HBCUs. I mean, it's everywhere. <laughs> so. You know, yeah, I, went play, I, I played at Florida State, and fam, you was around the corner, and you know, you had every. I mean, not to mention the band is like a is like a pledge process as well. So yeah, yeah. pretty much they go just, they go just as hard as football, or probably yeah. harder. Wow. I just I was I ain't gonna say it. So, <laughs> so how did you get how did you end up in the C, how did you end up in the CFL? What was your road to the CFL? Um, so I ended up going to a tryout. Winnipeg, it went to Texas, so I drove up to my aunt's house, and I tried out. They liked me, but I guess I, I didn't make the cut. So then I, right before I graduated, I went to Ottawa's tryout, and they actually came to Shelby, um, North Carolina, where I'm from. I ran the fastest 40 time, I think, 437, so Nick, you know. Yep. Get your speed up. Get Shoot. your speed up. Are we, are we going to tell this story? Do you want me to go hey. into the story? Hey, watch out. Hey. Do you want me to do it? Hey, I'm I'm, t- I'm telling my story right now. Okay. Uh, okay. Rudy, so, you're so, so then, oh. uh, <laughs> we, 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 we'll go back to that. Don't worry about it. I, I'll let the viewers hear, hear the real truth. Okay. But but uh, Winnipeg came to Charlotte, um, and they ended up picking me up, signing me. But, uh, COVID happened, so I missed 2020 season, came up um, 21, and I was on PR basically the whole year, but, you know, got got some playing time, you know. Um, I actually was a strong half behind behind uh, Nick Taylor, so, um, you know, I was showing him the ropes. He was showing <laughs> me the ropes, you know, you know. Uh, then... Next season, I got my opportunity to go play boundary corner, and um, the sky's just been the limit, you know. I just took my opportunity, and I ran with it. Okay. What was the adjustment for you? I mean, because you obviously you played in American football, and, and there is an adjustment to playing in the CFL and the different rules and, 
and, and just technique, obviously, because you don't get a, a what do you call it? The waggle, Nick? The it's waggle. The waggle. You, you, yep. you don't get you, you don't get that in, in in American football. So just getting used to that difference, and you know, from playing in the in, in the U.S. to playing in Canada. Um. Yeah. More so, I had to work on my technique because, like, when I came into my rookie camp, uh, Coach J. Y. He like he blow the whistle like every time. Oh, that's P.I. That's P.I. That's P.I. I'm like, but I'm you know I'm not even touching them really. <laughs> he's like, he's like, nah, like up here. They gonna they call gonna it. Call P. They gonna call P.I. Like it's an offensive league, so um, that's my opinion anyway. Um, but I just had to work on my craft, work on my technique and my feet. Um. And just I had to adjust to the game, especially at playing strong half. Like you have a lot of you, you gotta you gotta be a real athlete to to play that position. Um, I I don't know how Nick made it work, but uh, <laughs> he 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 did his thing sometimes. But you know, all right, all right. Okay, educate me on <laughs> on Canadian football here. Strong half. What's that mean in Canadian football? It's, strong it's, side, like in, like in, in yeah. So you're on the strong the side, you're on the okay. field side. That's usually where the most, you know, the most the wide, field, the, most the wide field. side okay. for the quarterback. So they got more room to work with over there. So the strong okay. half is basically like the dime or the nickel, but you gotcha. still have a DB outside of you, and you have some another DB inside of you. Um, okay. So you usually you, you basically you get all the routes, the, the the hardest routes, the you know. The most space you get to deal with on the field is right there because they're literally every route that they can do. So it's literally, to me, it's the hardest position on the field when it comes to guarding routes. Like boundary yeah. corner that he plays now is tough because you get a whole bunch of routes thrown at you. It's like being in the NFL over there. You're on the short side. The quarter, the receiver usually doesn't have a waggle, but it's the shortest. You know, it's the shortest throw to the receiver besides the person that's inside of him coming on the waggle. So you usually that's where the money makers are because you there's a lot of targets over there. But it's the it's the position that's more most like the NFL because you don't get the waggle so much. Every so often teams try to, you know, they put a tight end down there and then they can bring a waggle at you. So that's yeah. what that's the difference between that. So, so how amazing was Nick to your career, man? I mean, you know, we gotta see how what Nick really meant to your career. That's there, a great did, he question. Mean, did he mean nothing to your career? Did you teach him how to play football? No. <laughs> I really came in and I helped him out because I feel like he was getting close to the end of his career. And, you know, I just brought a, a great light to, you know, his last couple of years. And, you know, I really helped you out, my guy. So, but I, I can't say nah. Uh, he, he helped me out, man. He, he was a big mentor. Um, he really took me under his wing and I, I definitely appreciate him for that. Um, just, because I, I kind of got discouraged because I'm just like, I, I felt like I was able, I, I felt like my talent was good enough to play with them my, my rookie year. But, you know, him and other guys also told me, like, my time will come, you know, just be ready and whenever it came, just take take advantage of it. All right. We about to get to the nitty gritty right now, man. Oh, fuck. So, you, was, you were the interception leader last year. And then you come to the off season, you play with Winnipeg, you were with them for the past three years, right? Yep. Um, and now you come to the off season. Now it's time to make a decision. What happened there, man? Was it not enough money? Was it, you know, did they not see you as a fit anymore? Too much at the boundary corner over there? You know, it's, it's, it's boundary corner you in Winnipeg. They they turn a lot of corners into big play, yeah. playmakers over there. So what happened over there, man? Did you want to go back? Oh, I definitely wanted to go back, but I feel like, like you said, they they feel like at the boundary corner, they they, they plug in somebody every every year, and you know they make them all star. So I guess they felt like you know they would give me this price, and if I didn't want that price, then they I guess they felt like they could replace me, which I mean they have, you know. But um, and I guess I just I felt like. I deserve more money than what they they offer me. Um, my journey here to Calgary, you know, I, I felt wanted, you know. Um, I feel like I'm in a great situation. So uh, I'm just – God had a plan for me. Winnipeg wasn't wasn't in my plan. Calgary was. You just want to be wanted, man. I, I get that, man. Yeah. At the end of the day, you as a free agent, 
you want somebody to show you that they want you, that they care, yeah. you know, that you're important to their team. And Calgary stepped up and they let you know early on in the free agency period that you were their guy. And then you stepped up, took that, you know, that challenge to go there to a team that, that struggled last year in the secondary. Um, no blame to me. Um, but uh, last year was a little bit of a struggle in Calgary. Um, what do you feel you bring to that defense, to that, to that, to that secondary in, in general? I guess I come with experience. You know, you know, as a teammate that, you know, I'm not the most vocal, but I feel like they're, you know, I'm becoming more of a vocal leader. Um, just trying to bring the, help the young guys, uh, you know, get to where we, the expectation of, of trying to, you know, go on a long run and, and win a great cup. Um, and just be ball hawk, bro. You, you know, Anytime the ball in the air, man, I'm I'm trying to go get it. So I'm trying to have that where everybody is trying to get the ball, whether it's a fumble, interception, yeah, anything. Okay. Um. So you played Winnipeg two weeks ago. Now it's two yeah. weeks ago. Um. The last play of the game, you get the interception. Tell me, go through that play. Tell me your emotions, your feelings. You're playing against your your ex. You know, you want to show them that, you know, they let you go before they should have. So you really want to make a a big play, a big spark. You you just want to show them that you, you're you that guy and you should never let me go. Now go through that play and, and tell me your emotions after the game. Um, so one of the times, you know, <laughs> um, going into overtime. And I just knew, like, you know, with them being short on the receivers with, with health-wise, uh, they were going to try to go with the dense. Um, and we, we just had a good good read, me and uh, Kobe, and I, I switched off and she made a play, man. And I really tried to end it. I was trying to, I was trying to house it. I was trying to call game. It wasn't going to uh, end it. Boy, oh, no, yeah, they, they definitely weren't going to hear the end of that. But um, just me making that play, it, it felt like a story, storybook. Um, everybody bring up. The play last year, um, I, I got the pick six against Calgary to, you know, steal the game for Winnipeg. This year, I, <laughs> oh yeah, you, oh yeah, you was, you, you was on the other side. Um, that was supposed to be my moment, man. That was supposed to be my moment that game, my revenge game. But hey, go ahead. Hey, you know, I, I did it for us. Um, but then, you know, just to come, just to come back this year and, you know, um, steal the game. For Calgary against Winnipeg, you know, like I said, man, it's just a story, storybook, and then storybook, whole situation, man. And I'm just grateful that you know God put me in this position to just be great. Okay. So, so last week when we were we did our first episode, we got to see um, a wide receiver named Dominique Grimes give Nick the business a couple of times in a game, which we have on that video. Go get him started. Uh, you know, to Tossing him like a sack of potatoes, like a little five-year-old child. Who has he... been the best receiver that you have had the opportunity to face? Obviously, you're you're playing, so if you don't want to answer that, you don't have to tell the bet who you think is the best receiver, but we already know whose father is Nick's. It's yeah. Tommy Grimes. Well, it's, well the, the I won't say it the same there. way for you, but who's been their toughest match? Like, who's the, the one that's giving you the most, like, you really prepare differently, maybe prepare differently for that guy because of, you know, size um, or speed or whatever? I mean, there, there's a lot of good receivers. Uh, I would say Geno is, is one of them for sure. I remember um, that game. What, what game? I, I, I don't remember that game. I bet you don't. That's a DB. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Go ahead. I, I don't remember that game. Oh, uh, I don't remember that game. Uh, nah, but he, he's definitely one. You know, he has a good catch radius. Uh, a person, I, oh, well, I did play Kenny when he was in Edmonton. Yeah, he's he's definitely like that, too. Um, I really was looking forward to playing against him, you know, against Winnipeg. Um, but injuries happen. Um I I definitely say Reggie. He's one of them. I I never really matched up with him because Eagleton? he lined up inside. Yeah, you ever see? But, he goes hard yeah. every play. He doesn't know what five miles or fifty miles per hour mm -hmm. is because he's he's at a hundred every every freaking play. 
<laughs> nah, and and, it, and he's double teamed every yeah. play. I'm like, so. Um, okay. But real quick, I I want to piggyback off of what you said about Rams real quick. I, I feel like, you know, Nick, you gave him that uh, the, he got that little head top nickname or Mr. Head Top. No, it started I, I before that. It started before. I, that. I, I I feel like I feel like he got that from you, bro. It started like, before. Twice, that. that was like twice week, in it. That was week four. It, he had a couple early on in in, in this, you know. He yeah, he was you know building up to it like he yeah. got you earlier. It became and official. Then, it became official. <laughs> he had and it just yeah. I'm yeah. like, oh, now like, I think they still show, I think they still show that commercial to this day. No, no, that's, no, that's, that's, it's a new year, new year. They don't show that one anymore. I haven't I seen. Think, it. Well, well, we showed his video on last week, so if people want to see Nick get burnt a couple times. They can you watch last week's video. I don't remember. I'm a DB. At heart. I don't remember. I don't remember that play. You gotta forget that's that. Yeah, that's that's good. You you yeah. might want to forget that. All right, all right. On to the next question. All right. All right, as we wrap up with Demario, um, you were ranked number twenty nine on the top fifty. Am I correct? You remember? Don't give me that look. You remember? Yeah. Okay. Twenty nine. Yeah, twenty nine. Is that a big motivator for you this season? Uh, it is. Uh, I, it is a blessing to be in the top fifty. Do I feel like? I feel like, in my opinion, I was higher than twenty nine, but. I mean, the CFL people that they get paid to make picks. All I do is get paid to play and you know perform. Yep. So um, my goal is to be higher every year. Um, my goal is to beat all my goals from the previous year. So of course, you know, I'm trying to get my crown back. Um, interception. You're behind. Uh, can- yeah, I know. It's kind of pissing me off. But I think Milligan, Milligan, he got like three. Yeah, I, I was lead. I was lead. I was. I yeah, was you, leading too. You right, missed right the week. So yeah, um, uh, trying to be you know top DB and everything. Yep. Top the list of everything, man. Um, but most importantly, win another great cup because mm-hmm. I feel like I was a part of the team, but I wasn't. You know, I I was on PR. So I, I want one that's meaningful to me. I get that. <laughs> I get that. So let me let me ask you a quick question. I know Nick has a couple more, but I, I, as someone who's playing the CFL, do, do you still ever, you know, do you get phone calls ever from NFL teams or, you know, how does that work? I mean, I mean there's been some CFL players in the past that have gone from the CFL to the NFL. Um, is that something that, you know, is still a, a goal for you or um, was that just this is the focus right now and you're not worried about that um it it is a goal but i feel like i'm if i was just stay in the cfl um i'm happy where i am um i only really to be honest i only had one nfl experience like my whole life i mean everybody's had a pro day coming out of college but mm-hmm. this all season i had like a, a tryout with the chargers um I really, I feel like it went well. Um, in-house stuff that I mean, I guess probably held me back from getting picked up. But I mean, it was a great opportunity, great experience. Like I said, my first NFL, anything. So um, that was that was that was a great moment for me, a big moment for me. But if it came down to it, I I could see myself staying and having a long career in the CFL. Uh-huh. Right. And, and I'm going to piggyback on something else you said earlier. You mentioned your 40 time of 4.37. Um, I mean, Nick and I have been having this uh, debate conversation where I don't know if you've seen it or not in any of our videos, but he's massively disrespectful. Did you run track in high school or in college? Yeah. You did. I did in high school. Okay. Nick says that in his prime, he could have walked out onto a track. That's not what I said. And run a, and run a sub. No, that's what he said first. I have it on text. He's adjusted because that's what Nick does. He adjusts commentary. Well, I, was supposed, elab- yeah. Yeah. I was supposed to elaborate for him. Um, but he says he could walk out with six months of training now. That's his newest one. And run a sub 9.9 nine in the 100. Just because oh. he ran a 4.09 one day. One day. And, yeah. And I felt it might it might have been like a hand watch. I'm I'm sure it wasn't electronically. You so. know, I, and I'm and I'm telling him, I'm like, I know you're fast as hell, but like these guys are the like there's only been fifty 
guys in the world, of his, the history of this world, who run a sub nine nine. And I will be fifty one. And and and, no, and no. Jamarcus, Jamarcus from the hood could run a, a nine nine too. It's, it's a couple people out there that didn't get a chance. If you give them, you put them on the blocks, you show them how to run some technique. But, you know, they'll be able to run a nine nine or nine nine five. They'll be under no. a ten for sure. No. No, just, you, just, you fast. I give, I give you that, but you, you're not doing all that. Huh? You didn't even no. see me when I was at my fastest, and you lost to me in a race when I was, I was 34 no. years old. Matt, 34 no. years you old. Off, hold on, hold on. I'm not, I'm not done. I was 34 ahead, years old, Rudy. I, I, I was barely getting any sleep. I just had a baby. Um, <laughs> we're, you know, I'm coming into practice and meetings in the off, you know, the this uh before camp, we going through like little things with the league and stuff like that. So we're going to hold up. So my eyes is, you know, it's very, very wary. And I walk out there and, and Demario thinks he could, he could beat me in the race. And I say, old oh, man still got wheels. Now this before the, we, 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 we before the Achilles, Rudy. And let's just say everybody was like, Demario, leave that man alone. You're still no, not messing with, they, they call me Unk. You're still not messing with Unk. Cause you I know tore, you I, tore, you, I tore that ass up. No, no, you didn't. You took off early, and you know. don't, don't, don't come out. Oh, so Nick cheated. Oh, that, that, that yeah, sounds like that, that sounds yeah. just like man. the Mario left first, and it didn't end good. Oh, and if he wow, has a slow God. takeoff, because he can't get out the yeah. block, so he ran track, Rudy. He ran track. He, he got a slow takeoff. But you ran, you ran, you ran a hundred, or you ran a forty. Yeah. It was like yeah. a quick forty. Oh, okay. But Nick's, so, but again, okay. Nick thinks that running a hundred is like simple shit, and you no. can just walk out there no. six months of training. Like these guys have been training their entire lives. I say that's the easiest thing to transition to is a, a sprint like that, where you don't have to maintain the power as long as the two hundred, and, and and it's easier than any sport to go play basketball, football, and learn how to do that. Track would be the hey, easiest Nick, thing if Nick you have some ability to fly. run. Hey, Nick, that he can go out and fly a plane right now if he let him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, Nick, Nick, Nick thinks he could have played for the Florida Panthers in the Stanley Cup too. No, 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 hey, I, I, don't, I, I don't, I don't mess with the ice. I don't mess with the ice like that. <laughs> hey, I, I love his confidence, but hey, come on now. Oh. He, he, th he thinks he could walk into an, an, an MMA cage and, and go, go take on a world champion in no, MMA no, 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 and, no, no, and no. not be dead in five seconds. No, 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 no. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. All right. see, okay, see, you, you see, Nick, that a, a former track athlete who actually ran track, and he's explaining to you, and you're still debating he's someone a, who ran track. He's a hater. He's hating on he, me because I beat him he, so bad that day. He still, he still no. can't let it go. Come on now, did, did somebody film this? I wish, I wish Rudy, they would film it. Rudy, I was 34, no sleep, walking into practice, you know. <laughs> Hanging no on. Sleep. You're an early, you're a morning person. That's that's you. You were up at five a.m. for fun. I was I was hanging on by a thread. Nico was being a tough baby. It was, it was oh. a time. It was a time. Um, hey, Tia had him the whole time. Come on now. That is untrue. That is untrue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Demario, we gonna wrap this up, man. This is the last question, and we gotta get you out of here. Um, we know you got curfew. You gotta be at the meetings because since you're an early person, you get places early now. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> All right, man. Last question, man. How far can Calgary go this year, man? And how many interceptions are you predicting that you will finish the season with? Um, I feel like Calgary's going to go as far as winning the Great Cup. Um, we just got to get over the hump, you know, of finishing ball games. We're, we're in every ball game. Um, like I try to tell them, you know, it's it's the small things that that a win or lose ball games, um, and I've witnessed it, and experienced it, you know, great cups. Um, but the interception question, um, I'm trying to go ten plus. Okay, ten That's plus an elite category right there. I I never mm -hmm. would have made it there because they didn't throw the ball at me like that. So <laughs> you know it's different. Oh, Dude, oh. Listen to him. They're like there's nothing. Like he's, he, he got an excuse. He some, got an excuse. He got for everything. For everything. People, he, went, he went two and two in his picks this week, and of course he blamed it on something. I'm blaming it, it on Calgary not finishing. Something just wrong. It's, Calgary just, not yeah. finishing the game. I picked them as an upset over Montreal, and they don't finish the game. Come on, now. the other game, Toronto. They have the game. It's 2020. The, the young quarterback goes out there oh, and throw a pick six. 
They just Boy, he... blow the game at the end. Come on, man. It was this close, man. They go against the backup quarterback. They got to take advantage of that, man. I know they were playing on the road, but come on. It's two for two. I know people that went worse. And Calgary blew it for me. I should have been three and one easily. Demario, tell Coach Dick to get it right. Are, are there, are there, much before, the team. before you go, Demario, um, are there any embarrassing stories you have of Nick that we don't know about in the locker room? Because Nick likes to act like he was like King Dingling and, and, and ran the locker room and was the man and I, I, all that shit. I mean, he used to record himself in the locker room. He talks about like people recording themselves in the locker room. He's always recording himself in the locker room and then posting it on social media. You're asking the wrong person because he's the, he's the biggest recorder next to me right there. <laughs> Hey, oh, I, hey, hey, Rudy. <laughs> no, I'm not even gonna tell about what you be doing at halftime. But okay, I, hey, I'm not gonna get you in trouble with the commission. <laughs> yeah, I did not even do that. Oh, uh, dang, I can't even think of nothing. But now nah, he used to get bullied. Uh, bully? And, yeah, he used to get bullied. He he's supposed oh, to get be the bullied. Home, you know, oh, get bullied. Yeah, yeah. By who? Uh, he, uh, come on now. Everybody, all the DP. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't think of no story right now. Dang. Yeah, well, when well, we it, post it, this, it, you can type it up and put it in, in in the comments and let the world know. We'll take it that way too. Oh yeah. Oh, we, yeah. we appreciate it. Uh, we thank you for coming on, and um, everyone, yeah, De, Demario Houston, Calgary Stampeders. We thank you for being our first guest. Nick, anything left? Get healthy, man. Have a good year, man. Um, if you need me back out there next to you, man, holler at me. I might, I might come out, come out the booth, man. Man, man I tried to, I tried to tell you come, come back with me one more year. We could have oh, had the last, the last dance. The last dance, huh? Yeah, but now, yeah. Man, I appreciate y'all, fellas, for having me on. Thank you. It's All right, man. Have a good appreciate year, man. All right, have yeah. a good one. We uh, we thank Demario, Demario Houston for joining us today, our first guest on Come On CFL. We were trying to get some more dirt on Nick, so he's been he was beaten up by people in the locker room, is what we just found out at the end. That did not happen. Uh, and, and we also found out that he that he is a uh, runs a, a four five in the forty, not a four oh nine. Um, and a track athlete actually explained to him that running 100 in 9.9 seconds sub is damn near impossible unless you've been doing it your whole life. But let's get back into the power rankings. I'm sorry, the recap of last week. We get, we, that's what we got. What, 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 what is that? Which game was I talking First about? First game. <laughs> Jeez. So, yeah, oh, let's, let's... Toronto and um, SAS. Okay, okay. We're going to keep this brief. Um, It was... They um Sass end up winning thirty to twenty three. Um, there it's a tie game at the end of the game. We're gonna skip to the end of the game. It's a tie game twenty twenty. Cameron Dukes, the backup quarterback who's starting because of uh Chad Kelly situation, he has three interceptions. Man, he's not playing a great game, but I'm not blaming it all on him. I, I think he played well. He scrambled. He made some plays happen. Um, he just got in a couple of plays where he got in trouble throwing across your body. That's a no no. Um, cash money, young money, no, no, you don't do that. Throw it across your body as a young quarterback or any quarterback. Nothing good ever yeah, happens. Tell, tell, tell Patrick Mahomes that crap. <laughs> well, there's a couple people that can get away with it that are that damn good and you let them do it. Um, but you're a young quarterback. You don't throw it across your body. He ends up throwing four interceptions that game. A crucial one at the end of the game is a pick six to um, to um, to sales. And sales go and he scores the ball. They come back. Um, it's a... They, they they turn it over again. Another pick to Roland Milligan. He ends the game. He gets pick number two for that game. Um, and they end up kicking a field goal, go up 30-20. They bench the quarterback, as they should, because you have to teach the young man to take care of the ball. But I'm not blaming it all on him. I think his receivers left him out to dry a couple of times. When um, the receiver don't run through it, um, the ball kind of gets off his hand. It falls into the, the DB hand, and plays like that happen. Another play, the, the receiver kind of um, tap his foot, don't run through the ball. Quarterback put him in a you know a bad situation, but you got to save the quarterback sometimes. And I thought he made other great plays, but at the end of the day, you can't turn the ball over that many times, four times. You you have to get benched. You bring in Nick Arbuckle, the you know 
elite career backup quarterback. Every time he starts, he's not that great. But when he comes in as a backup, he, 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 you know, he makes plays happen. They get the drive down the field. They cut it. To, they cut it to seven with the field goal. They don't get the stop on defense. Um, Shea Patterson make a couple big plays. He throws the ball out there on second and ten plus. They get the first down. He come down another second and long. They send a blitz. Robbie Smith, the DN, loses containment. All you have to do is keep him inside, make Shea Patterson step up. Shea Patterson break containment. He throws the ball back across his body to his receiver, wide open, first down, ball game. Um, so that was a good game right there. Sass ends up winning the game, make me look bad in my picks as Rudy lets me know every time. I say, Rudy, I could be wrong sometimes. I'm just giving my expert advice on what I think should happen, and it should have happened, but it didn't. So that's what happened in that game. All right, the next game we get – Winnipeg versus Ottawa. Rudy say, hey, I'm being biased. But I'm not. I just knew that Winnipeg. Okay, okay let's not make this a 30-minute uh, Winnipeg experiment. We're, we're not going to do that this time. Winnipeg, they, they, they handle business at home. They run the ball. Chris Drebler, they keep the game safe for him. A lot of RPOs. He's not the best thrower of the football, but he's, t- him, he's Tim Tebow. Picture Tim Tebow in the CFL. That's what Chris Drebler do. He takes the start for Zach Caleros. He runs the ball very well, over 70 yards rushing. They hand the ball to Brady 23 times. He has over 100 yards. They get back to what they do. Pound them, ground them football. It's not going to be very pretty right now. You let the defense play the way they've been playing, and then you just run the ball. Don't turn the ball over, and that's the key to success. They do that very well against Ottawa. Drew Brown gets hurt. Um, Red Cramby come in. He, quarter, uh, he comes in, you know, quarterback slide, DB. You don't know in certain situations, man, like if you stop, the quarterbacks continue to run. They don't slide, and then you look foolish as a DB or as a linebacker or anybody. So he comes in hard. The quarterback slides. He gets him in the head with his with his elbow. He's out with the concussion. Their starting quarterback's done. They're bringing in the backup, Crum, who actually led um, Ottawa to – a comeback win last year by scrambling. This time, he doesn't just do so well scrambling, you know, as he did last time. He did scramble, but he turned the ball over a couple of times. Willie Jefferson finally comes out of the hole. He gets two sacks, one for his fumble. Um, the receiver, I mean, the DB Bond gets an interception against Dominique Ryan. He does something I didn't do against Dominique Ryan. He makes a play. <laughs> um, Dominique Ryan, um, Ottawa has to get him involved. We said this last week. He's their big acquisition. They bring him back to Ottawa. And he has one catch on an opening play for two yards and nothing else. Um, so that's a big problem for Ottawa. But they lose that game. Both teams ran the ball pretty well. I like Ottawa running back. But they lose the game. Winnipeg, ground and pound. Chris Traveler gets his win. Ottawa's, Winnipeg's on to the next week. Um, the next game we had up this week was um, we had Calgary versus Montreal. Calgary is – in control of this game. They're up 26 to 12, Rudy. In the third, in the second quarter, they're in control of the game. They get an interception on Cody. Cody's playing well, but they get an interception on him. They're making plays. They got them under control for the most part. Um, but Jake Myers, um, he throws an interception at the end of the game. But before that, he has a pedestrian 100 yards throwing this game, but they're still in control of the game. But they go seven for twenty-one on third on second down. You cannot win the game. You have to sustain drives. In the second half, they sustain no drives. Montreal, like the champions they are, the defending champions they are, they fight back. Cody Fajardo goes for over three hundred fifty yard plus throwing the ball in the air on a three forty, I believe. Um, he lets it hang. He let it fly. He throws it to his great receivers. His running back could very well be the O Canada O Canada player of the week. He has one hundred and sixty yards from scrimmage, one hundred and four yards. In the air, just as much yards as the Jake Myers has throwing the ball for Calgary, and he has another 56 yards on the ground. He has a a touchdown. He leads them back. Montreal gets the win. Jake Myers, he's been – I gave him so much credit earlier in the season because he's been playing well. He's been moving well in the pocket. But it comes back to biting him, the same thing that bit him last year. He scrambles out the pocket, and it's second down. They need a touchdown to win the game. He throws it back across his body. Cardinal send it, but he's been getting away with it this year. He's been doing a lot better, but he's usually been throwing it to his sideline when he scrambles, not back across his body. This time he does it. DB uh, Montreal, DB, Ruffin comes back and picks it off for his second pick of the year. 
and they win the game. Calgary did have another chance, though, earlier before that. They had a chance on a two-point conversion. Um, Montreal goes for two-point conversion to go up six. Trey Robinson picks the ball off after having a bad drive. And he's in front of everybody, Rudy. This gets some two-point conversion now. You can flip the game. So they're up four. You get the two-point conversion in front of everybody. He gets caught by one of the Montreal's not-so-fast receiver, Reggie White. Reggie's my guy, but he's not fast. Um, so that situation would have put him, you know, down two. You just need a field goal to win it. But they didn't. They needed a touchdown. Didn't get it done. Montreal, another win. Um, they, start, they start off um, – undefeated this year, and they look damn good, man. Right now, they're looking like they're on pace for the Great Cup. Barring any big injuries, man, they will be my favorites for the Great Cup right now. So that's all four games? Or oh, we have one that? more game. We have BC Lions versus um, the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Um, Hamilton, they just aren't good. Um, their secondary is very young, um, but Vernon Adams just goes crazy against them, man. He throws for over 370, man. It's just wherever he wanted to throw the ball, he threw it. He has his receiver, Hollins, out there. McGinnis starts the game with a a touchdown. They just can't stop him. Their their offense is very elite. Vernon Adams is on pace to be the MOP, man, most outstanding player. He's been damn outstanding, man. I I can't give him enough praise, man, because when I first seen this guy in the league, he was a quarterback was known to just run the ball. You know, wasn't a – known to be a thrower of the football and now he has turned into a very elite thrower of the football man he will throw for over 60 6, yards this year that's what pace he's on right now man um he's been elite man he has I, and i want to give credit to the receivers but last year this happened with the receivers he's missing his top receiver or arguably his top receiver to achilles injury in the playoffs last year a thousand yard receiver hatcher and they look like they have not missed a beat they added Stand back, like I said before, and he runs the ball very hard. They finish the game, let him pound the ball out against Hamilton at the end of the game. And Hamilton just isn't good. Bo Levi had a good game, over 350 yards, what me and Rudy talked about last week. He's up there in, um, in yards per game. But they're down the whole game, 20 points, so BC defense goes a little soft. And, but Bo Levi can still throw the ball with the best of me. Like, he just flicks the ball, and he can throw the ball 60 yards. But they're just not good over there, man. Their defense is downright terrible man the secondary is brutal they lose their hall of fame linebacker he retires simone lawrence he's just an impact player for them um mm-hmm. he has a lot of controversial plays in the league but he's just an impact player for them man. he's their heart and soul and he, they lose him and they go young and they're just not that good and that's just what happened this week man all right so uh there you have it that is the recap for the week and now we're going to jump into nick's power rankings um, he told me to keep it short. Keep it short. All right. We just heard everything, so let's go. By Ten at to number nine. Nine, nine to one. Nine to nine. one. At number nine, the winless Hamilton. Like I just said, we just broke them down. They're just not very good on defense. Secondary, very young. They're just. Uh, I don't see them winning too much games this year. Um, it'd be a tough. It's a tough situation because you bring in a um, Bo Levi Mitchell, who's a a quarterback, a vet quarterback, and he and, and you want to have. Other veteran players around him. What well, part of keep it quick, D? All right, yeah. all right. You want to have much... all we know. You think they suck? Oh, okay, oh, you want to have other vets around. So then, then don't have them as your quarterback. Go get a young quarterback if you're gonna have. If you're gonna have a young number nine is Hamilton. All right, <laughs> number number nine is Hamilton. Number eight on a bye week is Edmonton. I still think they're bad. Um, um, Chris Jones got to get things right. He had a bye week. Maybe they get it right. Maybe they don't. They're bad. They bring in a couple of players from free agency. At number seven, I don't move them anywhere. I keep them there to this week. Winnipeg, they play Calgary, who I have at number four. So I have Calgary at number four, but Winnipeg at, at seven. Um, at number six, I have Toronto. Am I missing the damn thing? No, no. At number six, I have Ottawa. I'm lying. I'm lying. At number six, I have Ottawa. At number five, I have Toronto, and I have Calgary going above them just because they played the Great Cup champions to a game where they damn near should have won, and Toronto just turned the ball over a little bit too much against Sass for me. Um, I'm a little worried about that. So I moved them down. I moved Calgary up, even though they both lose. At number three, I'm keeping it the, I'm keeping the same. No, I moved them down. I moved BC down to three, even though I had them over Sass last week. Shea Patterson proved enough for me to keep them at two as an undefeated team. 
but it's the clash of the Titans this week. They go head to head, so it don't matter where I have them ranked. They play against each other this week. Um, so we have Saskatchewan. They keep the, the, the train going. They keep the, the Oulette the running back, keeps the gravy train rolling. The defense is balling. They're making interceptions. They're rolling there at two. And then number one, the defender champions, man, they find a way to get it done. That's what great teams do, man. And uh, and Montreal are putting themselves in a situation to be considered a great team because they haven't lost in the 10 games, and they just keep finding ways to win. Even when they're losing and it looks bad, um, great teams, heart of a champion, they find a way, and that's what Montreal do. So we keep them at number one. All right. So there you have it, folks. Hamilton 9, Edmonton 8, Winnipeg 7. I'm actually surprised that you kept them at 7. Ottawa at 6, Toronto at 5, Calgary at 4, BC. I don't think they call themselves British Columbia. I guess it's too long for people to say. BC yeah. at 3, uh, Sas- Saskatchewan. At, is what you call them, Sass, right? Okay. Yep. 2 and number 1 is Montreal. Yep. Okay, that's, that's George St. Pierre's country. Um, <laughs> yeah, so let's look at Nick's picks from last week. I will run it down real fast for Nick. He picked uh, the he picked Toronto. Mm. They lost, right? Uh, yeah. Winnipeg. He picked Winnipeg. They won. Yep. He picked Calgary. They lost. Here's the, where he made the mistake. I had made a mistake on the graphic. He should have left it alone. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> I he I I had I made a mistake in the graphic. I put we put Montreal. So and, and then I and then he said, No, I picked Calgary. I'm like, okay, I fixed it. Gotta I change left it, gotta up. change it. Okay, you should have left it alone. And then finally he picked BC. And so he went two and two for the week. This week we're doing a little bit differently. Or we're doing it that we're doing straight up mm-hmm. and we're doing against the spread. Yep. So remember, we partnered with Bet99, use the sign up code. Come on, 99, all capital letters, up to $1,500 in first bet encore bonus. Yep. So, Nick, let's jump into your picks. First, we have the first game of the week, Toronto at Montreal. Toronto. Montreal is a minus six-and-a-half point favorite. Um, So, in this game, we're taking Montreal, but we're taking Toronto for the points. It will be a close one. All right, we got the points. Remember, everyone, please bet responsibly. Nick's picks are Nick's picks. <laughs> yep. And then uh, we got Calgary at Winnipeg. Winnipeg is a two-and-a-half point favorite. Well, Cal- Winnipeg, wouldn't, they're not going to lose another game at home for right now. So um, they catch Calgary after they lost a couple games in a row. Um, Winnipeg, I'm not sure about the quarterback situation. Is Straveler starting again? Is Caleros back from his sternum bruise that he got going on? But – Either way, I don't care. I'm going Winnipeg, and I'm taking the points with Winnipeg in this game. So points and win Winnipeg. We just had a Calgary cornerback on here, and he picks against his boy. He might not be playing. (laughs) And now we have uh, Saskatchewan against British at British Columbia. BC is a seven-point favorite. Game of the freaking week. Game of the week. And BC is just too hot, man. Their their offense is rolling. Um, but you know what? I'm gonna change it. I'm I'm flipping right here. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take BC, but I'm gonna take SAS with the points. Only because SAS last year, their defensive coordinator when they played against Vernon Adams, he forced them to six interceptions in one game. So I'm going to hold him to having a little bit of knowledge of how to deal with Vernon Adams again this year, that BC still gets the win because they're at home, and they give Sass their first loss, but Sass, I like them to cover. All right. And then we have the final game, Ottawa at Edmonton. Uh, Edmonton is a three-point favorite. A little, mm. su- a little surprise there, but... Oh... <laughs> Edmonton gets their first fucking win. Damn. Ooh. Edmonton get their first win, man. Um, I don't know Drew Brown's situation so far right now coming back from this concussion. Um, is it serious? Does he have enough time to recover and play in this game? Either way, um, Edmonton has made a couple big signings over the, over the weekend free agency on defense. It shores up their defense a little bit. 
and their defense need to be shored up. So um, I think their offense, um, McLeod Bethel, does enough to get it done. They get their first win in Edmonton, which they haven't won often until they beat, I think, Calgary last year. I, I wasn't there, but I was there. Damn, I was there. Part of that shit. Damn it. <laughs> 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 but yeah, rolling with Edmonton, and I'm and I'm taking the points. All right, so there you have it, folks. Nick has gone with all home teams: Montreal, Winnipeg, Boston. I said Boston College, uh, BC, and Edmonton, and he takes the points for Toronto, Winnipeg. When it, Toronto, Toronto's gonna not is gonna break is gonna beat the spread. Winnipeg's gonna cover. Saskatchewan's going to beat the spread. And um, did you have Edmonton covering? Yeah, Edmonton covers. Edmonton's going to cover. All righty. And then, uh, so that's Nick's picks of the week. Remember, come on, 99 is our code, all capital letters. Uh, at Bet99, please play responsibly. And now we're going to jump into our final segment of we're, the night. We're going to roll into that next week, Rudy. Let's keep what? this one right there. What? You talking about the, the my Canadian receivers? No. No. Oh, we're not doing that one. Okay, okay, we'll do oh, that. Yeah, next week. yeah, we'll do that next week. No, yep. we're gonna we're, we're gonna finish it off with uh, the player of the week, the O Canada, O Canada. Oh, is that what you call it? O Canada, my Canada, or is it O Canada, O Canada? O uh-huh. Canada, O Canada. Um, uh, def- offensive and defensive players of the week. Um, let's see. I think I <clears> had. <throat> okay, I, I I got this one. Hmm. Give me one second to get this one right. Okay, I had it. So wh- whoever, if, 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 if well, you're not watching live, but if you were watching live, you could send Nick money through Cash App, and then he could uh, make a decision. Okay. All right. No, no. For real, for real. <laughs> My O Canada, O Canada offensive player of the week. It could have been a couple players, um, but it's only right there to go to Vernon Adam. Big week, man. He's 26 for 36, 383 yards, Rudy. Four touchdowns, a 10.6. Average man, um, a couple of scrambles on the ground. Also, he was just unstoppable, man. He's just been a force. I, I, I keep giving this man praise and adulation. I, I'm loving everything I see him from this man throwing the ball, running the ball, his poise. He's he's um he's putting BC in line to be playing in BC for the Great Cup this year. Um, I'm really liking him. It could have been Walter Fletcher. Like I said, he had a big game against Calgary over 160 yards um, from scram- over 160 yards from scrimmage, uh, 104 yards receiving as a running back. That kind of reminds me of some Marshall Falk, Kevin Falk type of thing going on with him at running back. They replaced Stan back with him. And he's been the wonderful, but I got to go with the big play VA, man, um, for another week. And on defense, my old Canada, old Canada defense, a player of the week, it goes to Roland Milligan up the Sask, Saskatchewan um, Rough Riders. He finished the game with two interceptions, three tackles, another tackle on special teams, man. He's just been downright splendid on defense this year. They moved him to the boundary half. Um, he was a strong half. I remember when he came in the league, I said, these kids making plays because I play strong half. I'm like, and I keep seeing my stuff, my name up there for top half, half back of the year. Yeah. But I see this Roland Milligan guy, so I, I peep him, I watch him. He's physical, man. He's around the ball every play. He's um getting his hands on the ball, defending it, deflecting it. He's just been tremendous. I could have gave this to Willie J, who had two sacks and a forced fumble. I could have gave it to to uh, Marcus Sells, his teammate in Sass with a pick with a pick return that seals the game. Um, but Roland Milligan gets it this week. Number zero for Sass, two interceptions, three tackles. Oh, Canada, oh, Canada, defensive player of the year. Keep doing your thing, man. I enjoy watching you play. I like watching Sass on defense this year. A little bit different with a new coach. It's a fun year in CFL once again, man. All these games are darn near coming down to the end. That's what makes it special. And it's different than the NFL because in the last two minutes of the game, anything can happen. You just can't nail the ball for the most part with 20 seconds on the clock um, to get the play done. So this is the most exciting time of the, of the game, the last three minutes, because the clock stops um, after every play. Um, it runs it. I mean, if the it runs after if the ball stays in bounds, but it stops though. And then it runs once the ref puts it down. But 
man, anything can happen in the last two, three minutes of the game. The game is never over on side kicks. That's what makes this league so freaking fun compared to – I like the NFL, but compared to it, the game never ends, man. It's, it's just like you always have a chance in this league. I done seen teams come back from 14 points with a minute left, Rudy, and win the game. So that's what makes this league special and fun. I hope everybody that's on the American side who watch who's south of the border watches this league. Keep giving it a chance, man. It's on CBS Sports on, you know, usually one or twice during the week. Pay attention to the schedule, man. People that's watching us, listen out. Watch the games. Learn it. Just don't go in there with a closed mind. And learn about the game a little bit more, and you'll you'll find out that it's a very fun, entertaining league. And what's going on right now in the, in the world? Everything is is dead dead time in sports. Besides WNBA Olympics are coming up, watch some football. Y'all enjoy it. All right, um, thank you, Nick. That will do it for our second episode of Come On CFL, partnered with Bet Ninety Nine. Remember, sign up code is Come On Nine Nine, all capital letters, and um, we will see you next week. I'm doing two. On CFL. 4-0 this week, baby. Oh, 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 oh,